This is the continuation of so ISO 190111 part 2. Page 32 to 39. The information that can be subject to some degree of verification should be accepted as audit evidence where the degree of verification is low. The auditor should use professional judgment to determine the degree of reliance that can be placed on it as evidence. Audit evidence leading to audit finding should be recorded if during the collections of objectives evidence, the audit team becomes aware of any new or challenge circumstances or risk or opportunities. This should be addressed by the team accordingly. Figure 2 provides an overview, overview of a typical process from collecting information and reaching audit conclusion. Number 1, from the top source information, go to collecting by means of appropriate sampling. Go to audit evidence and from audit evidence it will go to evaluating against audit criteria and audit finding. It will go from audit finding it will go to reviewing. And from reviewing, it will go to audit conclusion. So preview figure 2 is an overview of a typical process of collecting and verifying information. Method of collecting information include but are not limited to the following interviews, observations, review of documented information, notary guidance on selecting source of information and observations is given in E.A.14. Note for guiding guidance on visiting the auditee's location is given in A.15. Note 5, guidance in conducting interview is given in A.17. Paragraph 6.4.8, generating audit finding. Audit evidence should be evaluated against the audit criteria in order to determine audit findings. Finding can indicate conformity or non-conformity with audit criteria. When specified by audit individual, audit findings should include conformity and good practice along with their supplier evidence, supporting evidence. 6.5.8, generating audit finding. Audit evidence should evaluate it against the audit criteria in order to determine of audit finding. Audit finding can indicate conformity or non-conformity with audit criteria. When specified by the audit plan, individuals audit finding should include conformity and good practices along with their supporting evidence, opportunities for improvement, and may recommendations to the auditee. Non-conformities under supporting audit evidence should be recorded. Non-conformities can be graded depending on the context of the organization and its risk. This grading can be quantitative, example 1 to 5. The quantitative example minor or major, they should be reviewed with the auditee in order to obtain acknowledgement that the audit evidence is accurate and that the non-conformance are understood. Every attempt should be made by to resolve any diverging opinion concerning the audit evidence or finding and resolve issues should be recorded in the audit report. The audit team should meet as needed to review the audit findings and appropriate stage during the audit. Note 1. Additional guidance on the identifications and evaluations of audit finding is given in A.18. Note to conformity or non-conformity with audit criteria related to the stationary or regulatory requirements or other requirements is sometimes referred to as compliance or non-compliance. Paragraph 6.4.9, determining, determining audit conclusion. Paragraph 6.4.9.1, preparations for closing meeting. The audit team should confer prior to the closing meeting in order to a review and audit finding. A. Review the audit finding and any audit appropriate information collected during the audit against the audit objectives. 
B. Agree on the audit conclusion, taking into account the uncertainty inherent in the audit process. Letter C. Prepare recommendations if specified by the audit plan. Letter D. Discuss audit follow-up as applicable. 6.4.9.2 Content of audit conclusion. Audit conclusion should address issues such as following A, the context of conformity with the audit criteria and robustness of the management system, including the effectiveness of the management system in meeting the intended outcomes, the identifications of risk and effectiveness of action taken by the auditee to address risk, the effective implementation, maintenance, and improvement of the management system, literacy, achievement of audit objectives, covering the audit, coverage of the audit scope, and fulfillment of the audit criteria. Letter D, similar finding made on different areas that were audited or from a joint or previous audit for the purpose of identifying trend. If specified by the audit plan, audit conclusion can lend, lead to the recommendations of improvement or future auditing activities. 6.4.10, conducting closing meeting. A closing meeting should be held to present the audit finding and conclusion. The closing meeting should be chaired by the audit team leaders and audit attended by the management of the audit team and include as applicable those responsible for the functions of the process which have been audited, the audit client, other members of the audit team, other relevant interested parties as determined by the audit clients and or audit team. If applicable, the audit team leader should advise the auditee on situation encountered during the audit that may decrease the confidence that can be placed in the audit conclusion. If defined in the management system or by agreement with the audit client, the participant should agree on the time frame for an action plan to address audit finding. The degree of detail should take into the account of Effectiveness of the management system in achieving the auditee's objective, including considerations of its context and risk and opportunities. The familiarity of the auditee with the audit process should also be taken into the consideration during the closing meeting to ensure the correct level of details is provided to participants. For some audit situation, the meeting can be formal and minutes, including record of attendance, should be kept in other instance, example, internal audit and closing meeting can be less formal and consist solely communicating the audit finding and audit conclusion. As appropriate, the following should be explained to the auditee in the closing meeting. Letter A. Advising that the audit evidence collected was based on the sample of the information available at this and this is not necessarily fully representative of the overall effectiveness and the auditee's processes. Letter B, the method of reporting. Letter C, how the audit finding should be addressed based on the agreed process. Letter D, possible consequence of not adequately addressing the audit finding. Letter A, presentations of the audit finding and conclusion in such manner that they are understood, the acknowledged by the auditee management. Letter F, any related post-audit activities, example implementations and review of corrective actions, addressing audit compliance, appeal process, any diver diverging opinion regarding the audit finding or conclusions between the audit team and the auditee should be discussed and, if possible, resolved. If not resolved, this should be recorded. If specified by the audit objectives, Opportunities for improving recommendations may be presented. It should be emphasized that recommendations are not binding. 6.5. Preparing and distributing audit report. 6.5.1. Preparing audit report. The audit team leader should report the audit conclusions in accordance with the audit program. The audit report should provide complete, accurate, concise, and clear record of the audit and should include a reference to the following A. Audit objectives B. Audit scope particular identifications of the organizations, the auditee, and the functions or process audited. Letter C. Identifications of the audit clients. 
Letter D, identifications of audit team and auditee participants in the audit. Letter A, dates and locations where the audit activities were conducted. Letter F, audit criteria. Letter G, audit findings and related evidence. Letter H, audit conclusion. Letter I, a statement on the degree of which the audit criteria had been fulfilled. Letter G, any unresolved diverging opinion between the audit team and, audit, and the auditee. Letter K, audit by nature are a sampling exercise as such there is a rest that the audit evidence examine is not representative. The audit report can also include or refer to the following as appropriate. The audit plan including time schedule, a summary of the audit process including any obstacles encountered that may decrease the reliability of the audit conclusion, confirmations that the audit objectives has been achieved within the audit scope in accordance with the audit plan, any areas with the audit scope are not covered including any issue of availability of evidence, resources, or confidentiality with related justification. A summary covering the audit conclusions and the main audit finding that supports them, good practices identified, agreed action plan follow-up, if any, a statement of the confidential natures of the content, any implications of the audit program or subsequent audit. Paragraph 6.5.2, distributing audit report. The audit report should be issued within the agreed period of time. If it is delayed, the reason should be communicated to the auditee and the individuals managing the audit program. The audit report should be dated, reviewed, and accepted as appropriate in accordance with the audit program. The audit report should be, then be distributed to the relevant interested parties defined in the audit program or audit plan. When distributing the audit report, appropriate measure to ensure confidentiality should be considered. 6.6 .6, Completing Audit The audit is completed when all planned audit activities had been carried out or as otherwise agreed with the audit for clients. Example, there might be an unexpected situation that prevents the audit being completed according to the audit plan. Documented information pertaining to the audit should be retained or disposed of by agree agreement between the participating parties and in accordance with the audit programs and applicable requirements. Unless required by law, an audit team and the individuals managing the audit program should not disclose any information obtaining during the audit or the audit report to any other party without the exp explicit approval of the audit clients and where appropriate the approval of the auditee. If disclosure of the content of an audit documents is required, the audit clients and auditee should be informed as soon as possible. Lessons learned from the audit can identify risks and opportunities for the audit programs and the auditee. Paragraph 6.7, Conducting Audit Follow-up. The outcomes of the audit can depending on the audit objectives, indicating the needs for corrections or for corrective actions or, up or opportunities for improvement. Such actions are usually decided and undertaken by the auditee within the agreed time frame. As appropriate, the auditee should keep the individuals managing the audit program and or the audit team informed of the status of this action. The completions of effectiveness of this action should be verified. This verification may be part of the subsequent audit. Outcomes should be reported to the individual managing the audit program and reported to the audit clients for management review. Chapter 7, Competence and Evaluations of Auditor. 7.1 General. Confidence in the audit process and the ability to achieve its objectives depends on the competence of those individuals who are involved in performing audit, including auditors and audit team leaders. Competence should be evaluated regularly through the process that consider personal behavior and the ability to apply the knowledge and skills gained through the education, work experience, auditor training, and audit experience. This process should take into consideration the needs of the audit program and its objectives. Some of the knowledge and skills described in paragraph 7.2.3.
are common to auditors of any management system discipline. Other are specific to individual management system disciplines. It is not necessary for each auditor in the audit team to have the same competence. However, the overall competence of the audit team needs to be sufficient to achieve the audit objectives. The evaluations of auditor competence should be planned, implemented, and documented to provide outcomes that is objective, consistent, fair, and reliable. The evaluation process should include four main steps as follows. Determine the required competence to fulfill the needs of the audit program. Establish the evaluation criteria. Select the appropriate evaluation method. Letter D. Conduct the evaluation. The outcomes of the evaluation process should provide a basis of the following selections of audit team members as described in 5.5.4. Determining the needs of improved competence, example additional training, ongoing performance evaluations of auditors. Auditors should develop, maintain, and improve their competence through continual professional development and regular participation in audit, see paragraph 7.6. A process of evaluating auditors and audit team leaders is described in 7.3 and 7.4 and 7.5. Auditors and audit team leaders should be evaluated against the criteria set out in 7.2.2 and 7.2.3 as well as a criteria established in 7.1. The competence required for the MD Bola's managing audit program is described in paragraph 5.4.2. 7.2, determining auditing competence, 7.2.1 general. In deciding the necessary competence for an audit, an auditor knowledge and skills related to the following should be considered A, the size, nature, complexity, product, services, and processes of auditees, B, the method of auditing, C, the management system disciplines to be audited, letter D, the complexity and processes of the management system to be audited, Letter E, the, the types of level of risk and opportunities addressed by the management system. Letter F, the objective and extent to the audit program. Letter G, the uncertainty in achieving audit objectives. Letter H, other requirements such as those imposed by the audit clients or other relevant interested parties where appropriate. This information should be matched against the listed in paragraph 7.2.3. 7.2.2, personal behavior auditor should possess the necessary attributes to enable them to act in accordance with the principles of auditing as described in Clause 4. Auditors should exhibit professional behavior during the performance of audit activities. Desired professional behaviors includes being A. Ethical Example, fair, truthful, sincere, honest, and discreet. Letter B, open-minded, example, willing to consider alternative ideas or point of view. Letter C, diplomatic, example, tactful and dealing with individuals. Letter D, observant. Letter E, perceptive. Letter I, aware of and able to understand situation. Letter F, versatile, example, able to readily adapt to different situations. Letter G, tenacious example, persistence of focus on achieving objectives. Letter H, decision, decisive example, able to reach timely conclusion based on logical reasoning and analysis. Letter I, self-reliant example, able to act and function independent while interacting effective without, with others. Letter G, able to act with fortitude example, able to act responsible and ethical even Though this action may not always be popular and may sometimes result in disagreement or confrontation, letter key open to improvement, example willing to learn from situation, letter L cultural sensitive example, observant and respectful to the cultures of the auditee, letter M collaborative example, effective interacting with others including auditee members and the audit personnel. Paragraph 7.2.3, Knowledge and Skills. Paragraph 7.2.3.1, Auditor should possess the knowledge, letter A, the knowledge and skills 
necessary to achieve the intended result of the audit, they are expected to perform. Letter B, generate competence and level of discipline and sector specific knowledge and skills. Audit team leaders should have the additional knowledge and skills necessary to provide leadership to the audit team. This is the end of uh, part 2 of ISO 1900111-2018. Guidelines for auditing management system. This is the continuations of ISO 1901-11-2018, part 2, page 32 to 39. The information that can be subject to some degree of verification should be accepted as audit evidence where the degree of verification is low. The auditor should use professional judgment to determine the degree of real reliance that can be placed on it as evidence. Audit evidence leading to audit finding should be recorded if during the collections of objectives evidence, the audit team becomes aware of any new or challenge circumstances or risk or opportunities. This should be addressed by the team accordingly. Figure 2 provides an overview, overview of a typical process from collecting information and reaching audit conclusion. Number 1. From the top source information Go to collecting by means of appropriate sampling. Go to audit evidence. And from audit evidence, it will go to evaluating against audit criteria. And audit finding. It will go from audit finding, it will go to reviewing. And from reviewing, it will go to audit conclusion. So figure, figure 2 is an overview of a typical process of collecting and verifying information. Method of collecting information include but are not limited to the following interviews, observations, review of documented information, notary guidance on selecting source of information and observations is given in E.14.